So let, let me start from this point. Nike or Nike was a Greek goddess, yeah? She was worshipped besides Allah and she was the Greek goddess of victory, yeah? You used to have, there was a company called Blue Ribbon Sports. The guy who used to deal with the marketing and the branding of Blue Ribbon Sports, one day he woke up because he was into Greek mythology. He came and he said, you know what, me, I got a name for this, co for this company's brand. I'm going to call it after the Greek goddess. Nike or Nike, whatever it is, but the guy who worked for the company said we're, we're taking inspiration from the Greek goddess, right? Now in our Sharia, this is Harab. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu saw a companion who was wearing a cross and he told him to take it off. We're not allowed to wear articles of shirk. Articles of things that were worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal, right? So because Nike was a god or a goddess that was once worshipped besides Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, we're now no longer allowed to wear it. Now, I'm going to quickly summarize a lot of the contentions that you might have and you might not need to raise your hand in a second, so just hear it for a second. The first thing people mention is, but the, uh, the, the days in the week are named after Greek gods as well and Roman gods. Wednesday is named after Woden's day. Thursday is named after Thor's day. Thor was also a god worship besides Allah. So is this not shirk? So we say, no, they were worshiped besides Allah. But the prohibition didn't come with regards to a name of the day of the week. The prohibition came with regards to what you wear. Because the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahabi, take off the chain, the necklace he was wearing. It's about wearing articles of shirk. If I say, guys, we're going to have a meet up on, you know, this particular day. Or guys, we're going to do a da'wah project on Christmas Day. For example, last Christmas Day, we had a conference in this masjid, alhamdulillah, right? So we say, guys, we're going to do this conference, this lecture on Christmas Day. Is that shirk? No, I'm just saying we're going to meet on that day. That's not haram. The prohibition wasn't with regards to, uh, you know, you identifying a particular day in the week or a particular month in the year that was named after a god. It was with regards to wearing a symbol of another god, number one. Number two, the second thing people say that this, this god's not worshipped anymore though. No one worships Nike or Nike anymore. So we say, regardless of that, Allah mentions gods that were worshipped in the Quran, Allat wal Uzza, okay, who were two gods that were worshipped at the time of the Quraysh. Are you going to walk around wearing a t-shirt of Lat and Uzza? Imagine a t-shirt of Lat and Uzza. In Surah Nuh, what did Allah say? وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِيَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدَّمْ وَلَا سُوَعْمْ وَلَا يَغُوثَ وَيَعُوقْ وَنَسْرَ These are five gods. These are five different gods' names Allah mentioned. يَعُوقْ and نَسْرْ and so on and so forth. Are you going to wear t-shirts with these guys' names on there? No, you won't. And I'll tell you something else that's scary. These gods, Allah and Uzza, they, are they worshipped anymore today? No one worships them. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, that the hour, the day of judgment will not come. Brothers, pay attention. The day of judgment will not come until people start worshipping Allah and Uzza again. These idols are going to be brought back. They're going to be worshipped again. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La taqu and hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, authentic. La taqum sa'a, the Prophet said, the day of judgment will not be established. Hatta tattariba ala yata nisa'i dawus ala vi khalasin. The Prophet said that the day of judgment will not come until the women of those, they start to move their hips and move and dance around the idol of Dhu Khalasa. Dhu Khalasa was an idol that the Prophet told his companions, he said, go to Yemen and destroy this idol. They destroyed it in the time of the Prophet But that idol is going to come back. It's going to be brought back and the day of judgment will not be established till it's worshipped again. So we know from that, just because an idol is not worshipped anymore today, doesn't mean it won't come and start being worshipped again. All idols in our Sharia are not allowed. If we have the ability, we, we have to destroy the idols. That doesn't mean you go into JD Sports and start destroying all the Nike, or you don't do that because we don't have ability, we don't have authority, it's not our country. So we don't do that. You don't go into... You don't do that. But if it was if it, if it, if it was if it was if it was my Nike shoe that I owned, I would destroy it. I would destroy it because the Prophet destroyed all the idols. That name Nike is an idol. The cross isn't Jesus, but that cross symbolizes Jesus, the Son of God. You see? So even on Nike, the text that is no is not the God in and within itself, but it represents the God. It's enough that it represents the God. Another argument that people bring is they say that the by wearing the Nike shoes, you're humiliating it. You're humiliating it. And there were some brothers who study in Saudi Arabia who were the ones who said this. So people think, oh, mashallah, someone from Saudi spoke, right? And they said, oh, you know, you wear shoes, shoes are worn at the bottom of the feet. So this is humiliation. So actually I'm humiliating the goddess Nike or Nike. I'm actually belittling her. I'm mocking her. That's what they say, right? So to these people, we say to them, um, hold your horses, right? Because Sheikh Ahmed Najimi, rahimahullah, 
Ahmed al Najmi, rahim Allah, who's also from Saudi Arabia, he also passed a fatwa, but he said Nike is haram, okay? And his fatwa, inshallah ta'ala, is more correct. Shall I tell you why? Because just because in Saudi Arabia, people, when they, they think of shoes as something that's low, they think of shoes as something that's low. That doesn't mean people here think of shoes as something that's low. Shaykh Abdul Rahman Nasr said, he said, the urf, the customs of the people will be implemented. The sharia, the ruling is in the context of the customs. So what is humiliation in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan is not humiliation here in the UK. Here in the UK, what you wear on your feet, is that a humiliation? Rather, if you've got dead trainers, that's a humiliation. A man will pull you up and crap check you and say, well, I'll come for you, Ak. What are you wearing these prim souls from Primark? So, am I wrong? People, they wait in the queue for how long to get a pair of Jordans, huh? How long do they wait to get, wait to get a pair of Yeezys? If, if, if you were dishonoring the shoe by wearing it, if you are dishonoring the shoe by wearing it, why would you spend 70 pounds on a pair? Why are you spending money on something that you dishonor? I'll tell you something, if you told me back home in Somalia, not here, not the Somalis who are living here. Don't get twisted, Axe. You told me back home in Somalia, <laughs> that wearing shoes means that you're humiliating the shoe, I might uh, say you have a point. Shall I tell you why? Sometimes when I go to some of the Somali masajid, and the uncles, may Allah bless them, Allahumma barik, they don't realize, they don't, I, I, they, I, for them shoes are just whatever. I know it only happens to me in the Somali masjid. I sometimes will wear a nice pair of shoes. Nice pair of shoes, and I'll put it in the shoe, so, shoe, shoe shelf. And I'll come and it's gone. And where will I find it? In the toilet, they're using it. They're using it as shoes in the toilets. Because for them, they see it as, I'm just wearing something on my feet. So if I go to one of them uncles from back home and I say, uncle, like, this is Gucci. He's gonna say, bruv, at the end of the day, it's on your feet. He's not gonna take it seriously. The other day I came, and I have some nice slippers. These are expensive slippers. And they're not designer, but they're for my feet. They, like, they, they, they help me for my feet and my back or whatever have you. And they were gone. And uncle swiped them. And I knew it. So I went to the toilet. I was like, is it in the toilet? Is it not in the toilet? Where is it? And then I, just as I was like, right, okay, I've accepted it. I've got no shoes. And I, was, and I, start, and I walked out the message barefoot to go home. I saw one uncle. He said, my shoes. I my slippers. I was like, uncle, uncle, these are mine. I was like, and that's culture. It's, it's calm. It's, 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 that's their culture and you have to accept that but that's not your culture in Saudi Arabia it might be like that in Pakistan it might be like that but here me, you another Somali brother living here he's been influenced by the culture here, here culture is not to humiliate the shoe here bruv you rate the shoe when a guy comes in one of the first things you look at what's his crap saying you know the girls they like your shoes you know the girls are looking at your shoes so you can't say I'm humiliating it and finally finally people come and they said another thing they were like oh why are you giving out Jordans Jordans is made by Nike I said that's not my beef my beef is not who makes the Jordans the Prophet did business he, did, he engaged in transactions with the Jews are the Jews kuffar? are they kuffar? yeah they are so it's not who you do business with that's the problem it's what you wear, what I wear cannot be a symbol of the kufr. I can do business with a kafir, I can buy from a kafir, I just can't wear kufr on me. That's the difference. The Prophet Sallam, he gave his shield, his shield was marhoon, in the Yahudi. It was, it, was, it was with the Yahudi at the time he died, Sallam. It was a transaction that he engaged in. But he didn't wear the religious symbols of the Jew on him. You understand the difference? You understand the difference? That's the difference, my brothers. So, I hope that answers all the shubhat on this issue. But I, I would just say one thing to you, brothers, yeah. Put all the arguments to the side and discussions to the side. Just, would you be... Are you confident knowing that when you die, when the angel of death takes your soul, at the time the angel of death takes your soul, you have the name of another God on you? That's going to be people. On your shoes, or your t-shirt, or your hat. You have the name of another God on you. Are you happy? Be problematic, right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, as someone who gives da'wah, I want you to go to Jannah. Now we all know that anyone who's a believer will ultimately make it to paradise or go to Jannah, right? And that's true, but what a lot of people don't realize is what does it mean to be a believer? Is it merely just knowing la ilaha illallah? No. Is it merely just saying it? No, the Prophet ﷺ told us in an authentic hadith that anyone who knows 
la ilaha illallah. He has knowledge. He has knowledge. He has ilm of la ilaha illallah. And then he dies. Dakhal al-Jannah. He will enter paradise. So you have to have knowledge of it. Knowledge of its meaning. Knowledge of its pillars. Knowledge of its conditions. Of what it necessitates. In fact, many people don't realize, but la ilaha illallah is the foundation of the whole religion. Everything stems from it. How? Where? In what way? This is, these are all things that you have to learn. For that reason, we have an online Islamic studies institute called the Knowledge College. And the very first thing that we teach on the Knowledge College is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So if you click the link below, inshallah ta'ala, check out the website. Hopefully you'll join us on the other side. And you can start studying La ilaha illallah with us. And then from that point onwards, we'll branch out to the other areas of the religion. We start on a basic level and we work our way up to the top. So hopefully, you can start your journey seeking knowledge of the most important things first. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.